Hello and welcome back to Fork in Politics. We're going to have another look at the Stoke Central by-election. So as you saw last week, the Stoke-on-Trent Central constituency has a by-election and the amusement that we're all finding there is the Labour candidate Gareth Snell. Now a week in politics is a long time and I suspect it's much longer if you are Gareth Snell. So what's the news in Stoke Central uh, this week? I suppose polling is one of the most important um, aspects that we've seen this week. We've seen nationally the Conservatives have taken a drastic lead in front of Labour and that continues to widen. Theresa May now holds a 68 point lead over uh, Jeremy Corbyn. I don't think things could get very much worse for Labour, but then they did. Um, the latest polling, which admittedly is from leave.eu and they are um, not going to be impartial on this issue. so. Take it with a little pinch of salt, but according to the uh, polling, UKIP is finally ahead of Labour and I suspect it will stay there. So the polling um, happens to be uh, UKIP 39%, Labour 33%, Tories on 11% and the Lib Dems on 10%. So. We also have a new lineup of the people that are standing for election in this by-election. So the people that are standing, um, it's grown since this time last week. So today is Sunday the 5th and we now have Mohammed Akram who's standing as an independent. Uh, Zulfikar Ali who's standing as a Lib Dem and again I am sorry if I've got your name wrong. Um, Jack Brereton uh, for the Conservatives and again I'm sorry if I've got your name wrong Jack. Uh, the Monster Raven Looney Party has finally put somebody in and this person, I don't know whether they're male or female, is called the Incredible Flying Brick which I suspect when we get on to uh, polling day and UKIP wins that might be rather appropriate. Uh, the Green Party, thankfully, have finally got somebody in, and that's Adam uh, Col... Wow, I'm having so much trouble with people's names. Uh, Adam Colclo. Col Colclo? I'm so sorry, Adam. Um, I've no idea how to pronounce that. Christian People's Party, Godfrey Davis. Another independent, Barbara Fielding. The BNP, David Furness. Uh, UKIP, Paul Nuttall, and Labour, Gareth Schnell. So those are the people that are standing and we know that as at this week, um, UKIP are ahead in the polls. The bit that I found most amusing this week, which I think was my favourite um, part of the week, was The Guardian ran an article saying that the Labour Party is now so worried about losing this by-election that they're trying to team up with the Green Party and the Liberal Democrats in order to bolster uh, Gareth Snell and hopefully overcome the UKIP um, momentum uh, that's put Paul Nuttall ahead. And that's rather amusing for the principal fact that uh, when the Tories did that with UKIP, Gareth Snell was all over uh, Twitter telling us exactly what he thought. And oddly enough, he's not on Twitter this time telling us the same things because it's his party that needs to do it. Um, as with everything uh, Labour, he is a massive hypocrite. So one of the negative stories for UKIP this week was uh, run by Michael Crick from Channel 4. He got hold of, which is perfectly legal, it's not a suggestion he can't do this, Michael Crick got hold of Paul Nuttall's um, nomination paper and he went down to the property listed as the home address and he peeked through the letterbox and the place was empty. He telephoned the letting agent who said that the property was up for rent and was vacant. Um, so he, he immediately took to Twitter with a big story that Paul had lied on his nomination form. He didn't live in the house in Stoke-on-Trent that was on his nomination paper. And unfortunately, as at 
the moment that that tweet went out and at the moment that Paul submitted his nomination um, form, that appears to have been true. Now, my understanding of the situation is that Paul had already signed the lease papers when he submitted his uh, nomination papers. So, technically, there is a breach of the Representation of the People's Act. Um, to put something misleading on your nomination form is, is uh, it, it's a criminal offence. So it does appear that Paul has committed a technical offence because that property wasn't his home address at the time that he submitted the nomination papers. So lots of people, especially Labour and Michael Crick, have been going, woohoo, we, we've finally got Paul and he'll, he'll go to prison for the rest of his life over this. He won't. Um, the police and the Electoral Commission, they, they look to the purpose of the Act, they don't look to the technical aspects of the Act. And the purpose of the Act is to identify who the candidate is so that constituents can go and speak to him. Well, Paul had signed for the property, Paul moved into the property. So I, I don't think um, the police or the Electoral Commission will take it any further than that because it, it was his property. Technically, it could be classed as his home. It, I think in a technical sense, it wasn't. But I think if you, if you go by what the Act means and what that section of the Act means, um, there is no breach of the law. So, sorry Labour, um, you might get excited by this, but I don't think it will go any further than that. I'm rather pleased to see that Nigel was out in Stoke-on-Trent this week, uh, pounding the pavements, knocking on doors, uh, meeting people. I mean, he stood and took photos. Um, it, it, it was really good to see him, uh, really good to see him supporting Paul, really good to see him supporting UKIP and I've been absolutely delighted with the number of people that have been going to Stoke. Um, UKIP put on free buses for people to travel up from London, completely ignoring the North West and the North East. Um, but you know, that that's UKIP at the moment, it's very London centric. So Paul's been getting a lot of support and um, I think Nigel going up really helped. And the amusing thing is, you know, we saw last week in, in my video last week, um, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, went up and made a complete fool of himself. It was even more embarrassing that um, his candidate had been calling him a Hamas supporting IRA lover. Um, he is all over Twitter slagging off uh, Jeremy Corbyn and Jeremy Corbyn refused to speak to journalists and it, it was distasteful and embarrassing. Um, Paul hasn't had that. Paul has been supported by everybody in the party and there's been lots of candidates going up to help him. Now, what I did find amusing, again, it came from Michael Crick at Channel 4. He'd made inquiries about where um, the, the Labour candidate was during the week. Why was he not out pounding the pavement? You know, UKIP's out. I'm fairly sure that some of the other independents will be out pounding the papers, uh, pavements. So was the Labour candidate in one of the most important and one of the biggest by-elections for a long time? Um, where's the candidate? It turns out the candidate who works for a trade union um, is at work and won't campaign during the week. So you've got to ask yourself, how committed is he if he won't even go out and campaign for his own campaign? Um, chatty man Gareth Snell, you are an enigma, wrapped in a Twitter quote. Um, so there you have it. Uh, he isn't committed. Labour are committed to making lots of tweets, but they don't appear to be committed to doing anything other than infighting. So that's Stoke-on-Trent as it stands. So there is something that I'm looking at at the moment. It may end up being nothing. It may end up being something quite interesting. Um, the campaign group Hate Not Soap have been out with their leaflets and find they they target UKIP a lot. They've targeted me previously. Um, so it wasn't 
unexpected that they would be out with leaflets, but it's beginning to look a lot like um, Labour are using Hope Not Soap to get around campaign spending. Now, I don't know whether that's true. That's supposition at the moment, and I'm looking at it, so I expect to be able to report back next week on that one. Keep your eyes open, especially on Twitter, because, um, I mean, they're bold-faced lies in the Hope Not Soap leaflet, and amusingly so, and uh, they don't know the difference between a um, niqab and, I think it was a burqa, I can't remember, yeah, it was a burqa and a niqab, they didn't know the difference between the two on this leaflet, and despite... Uh, which is my next big thing, is uh, the NHS. They lied about Paul's position on the NHS. So do look out for that leaflet. It's quite amusing. So I mentioned this last week. When uh, Paul first announced that he was going to be the candidate for Stoke, he made a speech about the NHS, and you can watch that now. Now let me deal with the issue of the National Health Service head on. The voters of Stoke will be told in this election that UKIP wants to privatise the NHS. This is a lie. It goes back to comments that I made back in early 2011 when I spoke about introducing more competition into the NHS. However, it is clear from the Labour Party's disastrous PFI programme that has saddled the NHS with a debt of 80 billion that I was wrong. We also will not take lessons from a party which privatised 5% of the NHS when it was in power and oversaw the mid-staffs scandal. Yeah. Let me be clear, UKIP has never stood on a platform of privatising the NHS in any election and UKIP never will stand on a platform of privatising the NHS. Yeah. UKIP made it clear, perfectly clear, in its manifesto of 2015 that the NHS must remain public and free at the point of delivery. However, it must also be a national health service and not an international yeah. health yeah. service. Yeah. also committed to the abolition of hospital car parking charges which in our opinion is little more than a tax on the sick and unlike the other parties we will put even more money into the NHS and we can tell you where that money is coming from because we will slash the bloated foreign aid budget which is costing the British people <laughs> the British people £30 million every single day. £30 million every single day. And we will reinvest that money into our NHS. And shortly after making this speech, about a day and a half later, he went on Peston on Sunday on ITV and... Again, he made um, a very direct and straightforward statement about the NHS, and you can watch that here. On the NHS, I know yeah. that your current position is that you support the status quo in terms of funding, but historically, historically, yep. you have been very critical of the way the, man the NHS is both managed and financed. You have been previously in favour of what some people call privatisation. How can people trust you on the NHS today? Well, firstly, uh, I'm not in favour of the status quo. I want to see more money put into the NHS. And UKIP is Where's the only... Where's that going to come from? Well, very simple. UKIP is the only party which will tell you where the money will come from. We have a foreign aid budget, which at the moment is costing the British people £30 million every single day. We believe that should be slashed and that money should be put into the NHS. However... So UKIP is the sort of Daily Mail agenda? Uh, well, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Daily Mail's agenda on this. You know, the foreign aid budget at the moment, which is due to go up to 15 billion by the end of this Parliament, is an absolute outrage. I want to see, I want to see British taxpayers' money spent here 
in our country on our own people. Now, let me deal with the privatisation of the NHS issue. I gave a speech, uh, I think it was at Hustings in January 2011, where I spoke about more competition within the NHS. Well, look, it's the Labour Party who are going for me on this. I will not be hectored or lectured to by a party which privatised 5% of the NHS when it was in power and has landed the NHS with a debt of £80 billion. But just to be clear, you have FI fundamentally contract. changed your mind on the role of the private sector in the NHS. In many you ways, have changed your on, mind, on, you? on a personal level, yes, I have, but the party, I want to make this clear as well, has never, ever gone into any single election in its history or will in the future with a policy of privatising the NHS. But given those rather direct and straightforward statements about Paul's position and UKIP's position on the NHS, you have to question and ask why, why is it that one of Labour's only positions in the Stoke by-election is Paul wanting to privatise the NHS? You know, he's been very straightforward and very clear in what he's said. He's been on national TV and said, he is not for privatising the NHS. So why is it the only thing that um, Labour can talk about is Paul wanting to privatise the NHS? Do they not understand that people can actually do their own research? Are they that dismissive of the constituents in Stoke that they think they can't read? Um, why is Labour not trying to debate policy? Why is Labour not trying to uh, debate Brexit even? Um, it, it's odd. The only thing that they can, they can uh, talk about is Paul wanting to privatise the NHS when patently it's not true. Yes, in 2011, Paul made some silly comments about opening the NHS up to competition, which effectively would have been privatising part of it. Well, it's a bit arrogant and hypocritical of Labour given the PFI damage that they've done to the country. So why are they going after Paul on an issue that he's changed his mind on, that he's apologised for? I'll tell you why. It's because Labour have nothing. They have no policy. Their entire position on Brexit is awful. They don't know whether they're for it, against it. They, they're in a 70% leave area and they've put forward a um, EU-loving anti-Brexiter. So, Labour, you are ruining your entire campaign and I can't thank you enough for it because Paul Nuttall, as leader of UKIP, will be the MP for Stoke Central on the 24th of June 2017. And I'll tell you what, I can't wait for the parties afterwards.